All right, so um, without further ado, we're going to, let's go to Exodus chapter 12 and verse 1. Okay, Exodus chapter 12 and verse 1. Uh, each brother would take maybe about 10 verses um, so we can get right through all uh, 50 verses. All right, Exodus chapter 12 and verse 1. All right, so um, I'll start. I'll start off since I got the mic. Um, Exodus chapter twelve and verse one. I know why you can read that. Right. And the Most High spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, "This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to right. you." So the Most High said, "This month shall be the beginning of months." It shall be the first month of the year unto you. So we know this time of the year brings in our new year. Right? Right. Not the dead of winter, even though it still feel like winter outside. <laughs> kind of damn weather I got here in New York, man. <laughs> All right? But, um, you know, the most I said, um, this is the beginning of our year during the so-called beginning of the spring season. Around what they call the vernal or spring equinox. Kind of that new moon that comes in around that time is, is uh, our beginning of the year. Kind? Uh, all right, read on. Speaking unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for the house. Right, so on the tenth day of the month, we're supposed to take a lamb, a lamb for, you know, the size of our household. All right, some brothers and sisters still try to incorporate that today. They'll try to get the lamb on that exact time of the 10th day, you know, just to be more in line with the, uh, the law to the best of my ability. All right, even though you got uh, Hebrews that say, you can't keep the Passover in captivity, brother. All right, with no understanding. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, that's, that's a whole lesson. We can cut that up. You know what I'm saying? But um, you know what I noticed? Israel is lazy with the feast days. Because this take work, you know what I'm saying, Khan? This take work, man, you know what I'm saying? To put things together, you got to carry, lug, prepare, set up. See, a lot of y'all just come and y'all sit back, hear the scriptures, the food get put in front of y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times we don't bother a lot of you brothers and sisters because we, we, you know, we, we know that we got to... A lot of times we do call on y'all because it's just too much sometimes. Like, look, man, y'all got to help out, right? And everybody should be willing to do something anyway, right? Next Passover, we should be hearing from y'all, right? Elder, what do you need me to do? Brother, what you need me to do? What can I bring? You should be on the meetings and different things with us. What can I do? What is my job? Because we are body. But at the same time, when, when you're in a leadership position, you know the work got to be put in. So you taking on the work of 10 men, not even realizing it, it, it becomes second nature to you. Like, yo, you know what, man, man, no, I got to make sure this happened, make sure this. I'm doing five or six things that other people is doing already. Like, yo, you killing that, you the brother got that covered already. I just want to make sure it's there. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you have extra, you know what I'm saying? And it's always better to have more than less. <laughs> That's what the infinite would say. <laughs> right? So, you know, it takes work. So a lot of times, you know what it is? Israel want to sit home right now. Probably eating a hero sandwich right. or pizza. Right. They don't want to engage in unleavened bread because they're greedy. <laughs> and they don't want to put in the work that it takes to put these feast days together. Huh? Uh, this take work. It takes sacrifice. Uh, some of y'all had to take the day off tomorrow because you know you're going to be up tonight. Uh, or some, if you couldn't get the day off, you might sacrifice and say, well, I'm going to just go to work tired. God? God. But it's all for the most high Yahweh. Maybe you got, you know, last week off and you couldn't get this week off. You know, but whatever the case may be, it's work. So a lot of times Israel come up with excuses when they want don't want to do what the most high say do. God, that's the bottom line. Read on. And if the household be too little for the land, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Right, so you share with the household next to you. All right, if the lamb uh, was too big for your house, you counted the household of your neighbors and you shared with them. Go ahead. Your lamb shall be without blemish. Right, the lamb had to be without blemish. Right, who was the symbolic lamb without blemish? Don't yell out. Raise your hand. 
who was the symbolic lamb without blemish. No, I know all of y'all know. Somebody knew. All of y'all know, man. Brother. Huh? Yeah, I was shy. Good. Good. All right, good. A male of the first year. A male of the first year. And somebody told me this year there's a, a congregation. All right, Shalom Levi. All right, hit me up. All right, y'all I'm safe, Shalom. 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 A sister was telling me this year there's congregations teaching that your lamb can be under a year. I said, sis, you, they got to show me that scripture. You know, I, I don't, I've never read that. You know, according to what we read right here, a year or older. Even when you go to the slaughterhouse, they ask you. You know what I'm saying? Some of them that's familiar with us, they know around this time of the year we coming to get lamb for the Passover. And so they see the beard and the fringes. You was a year or older, right? You know what I'm saying? It's usually them, Ishmael or Ham or Elam or maybe even Amalek. You know what I'm saying? And there's not too many Jake's own slaughterhouses. You know what I'm saying? So they see, they look at you. Oh, my friend, I remember you from a year or two ago. Yeah. You was a year or older, right? I got a nice lamb for you. Come on, man. I know it's Passover. Yeah, man. They know, even they know already. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because they know brothers are coming for that year or older land. Okay? So yet another doctrine in Israel. I don't know where that one comes from. Right? Go ahead. A male of the first year. A male of the first year. Come on. He shall take it out from the sheep or from the goat. Right. We should take it out from the sheep or from the goats. All right? A lot of brothers and sisters saying we should do goat. Maybe we will do goat next year. All right, I desire you gonna bring us a goat next year, <laughs> huh? Maybe. Right, and you Benjamites, man, y'all can't curry it. Y'all <laughs> can't curry the goat, man. <laughs> right? You gotta roast it with fire, with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Right, go ahead. <laughs> and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. Come on. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Right, as the sun was going down on the closing of the fourteenth day. There's a lot of confusion with uh, the Passover being eight days or seven days because uh, they think it's a separation with the first night and the uh, 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 the other seven days of unleavened bread. But you gotta understand. The 14th day of even is bringing in the 15th day. That's what it means. Just like for the day of atonement, it says the ninth day at even, which is bringing in the 10th day. All right? They think that it means the settling of the sun on the 14th day. No. It means as the 14th day is closing out, because you want to be ready on, for the Passover. You want to be ready as the 15th day is coming in. You want to be getting into the groove of the Passover. You don't want it to be sundown two, three hours already, and you try to get into the groove of the Passover. So that's why the Lord said that. You understand? So there's a confusion. Now, when you read some of the history of the Passover, it tells you that Amalek, some of the history, it tells you that Amalek made the Passover eight days to make it convenient for them if they're traveling, if they couldn't get the day off from work. They added it eight days just to have an extra day. They said that was not biblical. Even when you read, because like, I, you know, I'll Google Passover and I'll read like three reports on it. Not, not just Wikipedia, but you know, I'll read like three other articles and it tells you that they added an eighth day to the Passover. Even the Edomite scholars tell you the Passover is seven days. Seven days. It's yeah. seven days. The first day Passover is actually the first day of unleavened bread. Good? Yeah. Right? As we go and read, as we go down. Yeah. That proves that Amalek, Amalek is not really for the most high. He changes. Did you, did anybody catch them articles recently that came out where he told you Amalek was on, I think he had, what was it on, something he was sacrificing on, damn, chicken. yeah, chickens, right. like 40,000 <laughs> chickens, right. Right. sacrifice, right. And, and, and Amalek, they showed Amalek cutting right. the chickens and everything, right. that's blood sacrifice, man, right. that's what he's been doing for years, Amalek deal with the Kabbalah, right. okay, Blood sacrifice and, 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 and doing the demonic things, man. He's not for the Bozai, man. Okay, he changes the scriptures. You know, he sued himself, man. But the Bozai is revealing that. Son, you want to say something? Yeah. What is it? It's like what the brother was saying. It's talking about the evening of that 15th day because the 14th day is the slaughtering of the land. 
That's why when you read the scripture, for those of you who have world Bibles, or the red Bibles that the Jehovah's Witnesses like hiding from us, they tell you in the precept in between the evening, from evening unto evening. What are you doing on the 14th day? You killing the lamb, you gutting the lamb, you understand? You getting it prepared. That's why Yahweh Shai had told Peter and his disciples, he said, go prepare the Passover. You understand? Yahweh Shai was slain on the night or, or on the morning that all of the lambs are slain, are slain. But people get it confused because the 14th day is Passover and then the 15th day is also called Passover, but it's speaking about bringing in the Feast of Eleven Bread. Uh, keep saying, keep speaking for a minute. Okay. And um, matter of fact, to prove that, go to the book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 12. Can somebody read that for me loud and clear? Oh, okay. The book of Mark, chapter 14, and verse 12. In the first day of unleavened bread. So it says, the first day of unleavened bread, read on. When they killed the Passover. When they what? When they killed the Passover. So this is speaking about the 14th day. But whenever they talk about the Feast of Unleavened Bread and they talk about Passover, it always use it interchangeably. Because it's the same celebration. People try to make it into two different celebrations. I guess technically you could say that. You understand? But it is not eight, eight days. Read on. His disciples said unto him, Will wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? That thou mayest what? Eat the Passover. Stop listening to these phony Christians talking about Christ didn't celebrate Passover. He asked them to go prepare the Passover. Not prepare for Passover. He said prepare the Passover. Meaning the Passover lamb. Why do you think Peter kept falling asleep on Yahweh Shah when he was praying? He was tired. He was tired from preparing the Passover lamb. Because preparing the Passover lamb is not an easy thing. Like the brother was saying. It's a brothers is doing a lot of things on that 14th day. You know? Here you go. I, yeah. Brothers, we try to cheat the Passover, man. <laughs> brothers got a piece of their romaine lettuce on a plate. So got the bitter herbs, brother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, brother, get that horseradish up in there. Good? Uh -huh. All right. So um, that's the first night. You know, traditionally, we, we usually do it both nights, but the first night is when it's mandatory to say the bill. You can have a clothes on the Passover. You got a regular menu just without leaven. But you know, we, 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 we do both nights. But it's sacred on that first night. Con? Uh, you must do it on that first night. Con? Uh, uh, be done. Eat not of it raw, no sodden at all with water, but roast with fire. Right, so you're not supposed to stew it or boil it, but sodden, or no sodden at all with water, mean a boil or stew it with water, but roast with fire. So you get your grill, you get your rotisserie, your pit, some of y'all get creative. Right, and make grills, <laughs> all kinds of cement and bricks all together. Right. The hell is brother going, brother going back to the wilderness on taking us? It, taking it right? back. It's back, it brother, back in the book of numbers on us. Right? God, but you know, it is what it is, man. One brother in, in the Cali camp, he built like an underground pit, man. Right. And roasted that lamb under there, man. And, that lamb tastes like the kingdom, man. Yeah. I said, brother, man, we cheated on the Passover, man. This lamb tastes too good, brother. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, it's where we get creative with it. But as long as it's roast with fire. Cut. Go ahead. Go ahead. His head with his legs and with the putinance thereof. Pertinence. Pertinence thereof. Right, the, whole, the head with the legs with the inward parts. Right, in the ancient time, we roasted that whole lamb. Right. And we just cut off the, uh, the parts of the meat, the flesh, and ate that. All right, go ahead. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. Right, so you're supposed to eat up all the lamb on that same night. Don't let nothing remain of it till the morning. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right, go ahead. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. Right, that which remained, you know, till the morning, you were supposed to burn with fire. So you were supposed to eat up all the lamb in that night. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like we did on um, last Friday night. I was the last one there, man. I went through them pans. I found bones. I said, Israel ate that lamb up, cuz. <laughs> I, I didn't hardly get none, but, you know, I was too busy entertaining. But uh, brothers and sisters ate up that lamb. That was a lot of lamb. Right. God, we had, we had got our two lambs this year. 
So that brother, uh, uh, all praise to the uh, Most High, brother Shawapar, roasted up that lamb. It was a lot of lamb, but Israel ate that lamb up. Cut. Uh, Found bones, man. I'm picking the <laughs> lamb bones. Eight o'clock in the morning, man. Like, oh man, they ate up the lamb. Good. Uh, the sun is up. No more lamb is here. Good. We, we kept the commandment. Cut. <laughs> right. Good. Yeah, I got a precept. It's the Book of Psalms, chapter sixteen, verse ten. It says, "For thou would not leave my soul in hell, neither would thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption." And that's the reason why the bones couldn't remain to the morning. Because when they went to go see Yahweh shot in the tomb on Sunday morning, his body was already gone. Because the Mosai didn't allow Yahweh Shah's body to see corruption and start decomposing and all of that. If you let that lamb stay to the morning, I promise you when you go back there to that pit, it's going to be smelling and all of that stuff. You understand? So you're supposed to burn that all of the remains before the sun come up. Fine. Everybody understand? Fine. Because remember, the lamb is symbolic to Yahweh Shai. Fine. Fine. Right. So um, that's it on that. That's my portion. Um, um, Yahweh Isaac, I take uh, verse eleven, verse eleven to twenty. Well, I take about ten verses. All right. Fine. Yeah, uh, eleven to twenty. All right. All right. All right. Uh, I know how to read for him, and you elaborate on it. Fine. Verse eleven, and thus. Shall you eat it with your loins girded? So traditionally, we make sure everybody got their loins girded. You know, most of the time, brothers be looking for uh, this brother over here to, to make a garment for him. Get some, you know, get some girdles, you know, because we try to eat it exactly the way that is written in the scriptures. Read on. Your shoes on your feet. Which is shoes on your feet. I don't know why nobody wouldn't have shoes on their feet. But. Okay. You know, just in case, read on. And your staff in your hand. And then we and we make sure brothers have those staffs in hand as well. Read on. And ye shall eat it in haste. Uh-huh. It is the most highest Passover. And the reason why you eat it in haste was because when that death angel came and killed all of the firstborn sons of the Egyptians, you best believe those Egyptians is howling, crying in the middle of the night. Imagine that, just out of nowhere in the middle of the night, you hear people crying, yelling, screaming to the sky, and they know it's because of you. They know that their son died because of you. Not, not because you did it, but because of the evil that they was doing to you. So we had to eat it in haste because it was time for us to get up out of there. Read on. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night uh -huh. and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Right. So the death angel was going to pass through Egypt. Now we know that death angel was Yahweh Somebody give me um, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 18 and just read 15 and 16. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 18 verse 15 and 16 to prove that the death angel was Yahweh um, pretty much catch a wreck on the Egyptians. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon 18, verse 15. Uh -huh. Nine almighty words. So read. who's the word? Okay. It said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. We know that that's talking about Yahweh Shah. Read on. Leap down from heaven out of thy royal throne. Leap down from heaven out of thy royal throne. Now this is from the Old Testament. For all these Old Testament brothers who say Yahweh Shad is not in the Old Testament, it tell you that the word leaped down from the throne in heaven. Read on. As a fish, man of war, uh -huh. into the midst of a land of destruction. Read on. And brought thine unfriend's commandment with Salakia as a sharp sword, mm -hmm. and stand and standeth up, filled all things with death, uh -huh. as it touched the heaven. But it stood upon the earth. And Yahweh Shah came through and brought death as the death angel. And those screams went up to heaven. So Yahweh Shah was that death angel. And when he come back, he's going to be that death angel again. Because this second exodus is going to be even worse. So go back to the book of Exodus. And um, read where you left off at. Both man and beast. Uh -huh. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. So the Most High is executing judgment on this land. Because this is the new Egypt, this spiritual Egypt right now. We're living in bondage right now to this day. Some of y'all like to think that y'all free. 
because you could choose what job you want and you think you could choose what clothes you want, but they only put the clothes in the stores that they give you. You understand? They only give you the job that they allow you to have. You're not free. Read on. I am the most high. Uh-huh. Verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. So now the blood that you got from the sacrifice of that lamb, you had to put that blood around your doorposts. And that blood was supposed to be a token, like the brother Zabak said, to let it be known, like, look, we under the blood of Yahweh Shai. Right now, we spiritually under the blood of Yahweh Shai. But back then, we had to literally take blood and put it on our doorposts to let us know, Yahweh Shai, we on your side. Read on. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And this is where you get the word pass over from. Because when Yahweh Shah seen that blood on your doorpost, he passed over your house and went to the next person's house. You ain't had that blood on your doorpost, you was dead. Well, your firstborn son was dead. God. All right, read on. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you mm -hmm. when I smite the land of Egypt. Uh-huh, so the plague wasn't meant for us. The plague was meant for the Egyptians. Read on. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to, to the Most High throughout your generation. So notice it said, this day shall be a memorial, and you keep it as a feast. A memorial is when you have a remembrance. This is something that you're supposed to take serious. That's why a lot of people like to come together for holy days and have fun and stuff like that, but they forget about the memorial part. So a lot of people think, oh, we're going to come late and miss the service. Right. Guess what? The service started just when you came in. <laughs> you understand? But then along with that memorial part, it also says it's a feast. You're supposed to make joy out of this. You're supposed to celebrate. The scripture even tell you we went into captivity because we did these things with no joy in our heart. Right. Right. <laughs> it said because you served them not with joyfulness and gladness of heart, that all these curses came upon you. Read on. Ye shall keep it in feast by an ordinance forever. For what? Forever. No, only until Christ come. Forever. Wait a minute, no, until Paul tell you something different. Forever. It says forever. That's why Christ himself said, I desire to eat this Passover with you. Now, why would he desire to eat it with you if he was going to do away with it? I'm going to do away with something I like. That doesn't make sense. Read on. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. So seven days you have to eat unleavened bread. Not just stay away from leaven, but you also have to eat unleavened bread. Read on. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. And all of the leaven is supposed to be taken out of your houses. Now in today's time, because this other scripture tell you it shouldn't even be in your borders. Right? So now, we don't own these cities or nothing like that. So most of us, we take the leaven out, we put it in the trunk of our cars, or some of us, me and my wife, we stop buying anything that got leaven in it, we stop buying it months ahead of time. So that way there, by the time you get to Passover, you only got a few things to get rid of. All right, read on. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Right, and, and it's a good thing that we under grace. Because there's a lot of people that like sinning in ignorance. From the congregation of Israel. Oh, Salakia. read that again now. <laughs> for, for whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Right, right. it should be cut off from Israel. And when it says your soul is going to be cut off, that's talking spiritually as well. Because some people, they think because we live in now in what they call the, the New Testament, that we don't have to do this. But the Most High cut you off spiritually and won't have you enter into the kingdom of heaven. So we still got to follow this. Read on. And in the first day, there shall be in holy convocation. Uh-huh. And in the seventh day, there shall be a holy convocation. And now, right now, tonight is the beginning of the seventh day. So, Feast of Eleven Bread ain't over yet, y'all. Oh, y'all got the rest of the day to go, right? When sun go down on Friday, you know, then you can get back into it. But during this time, Feast of Eleven Bread is supposed to be a time of reflection. Because the scripture tell you, beware the doctrine and the leaven of the Pharisees. The leaven of the Pharisees was what? Hypocrisy. 
All right, and all kind of evil. So during this week, as we getting rid of, as we stand away from physical leaven, you should also be examining yourself about the spiritual leaven in yourself. This is not the week that Israel going to be pointing a finger at people. This is the week where we try to upgrade ourselves. All right, read on. All right, so like it. Well, I just want to uh, land me back on a brother's point. That's an excellent point. This is not the, the, the week to be nitpicking and nitnacking and looking for something on other brothers. Right. This is really a time to get the leaven from within. Right. That's why I told brothers, I'm not, I'm not even entertaining certain things. Right. Don't even come to me with it. You know what I'm saying? Yo, bro, yo, brother, you know that. Yo, brother, we'll talk later about that. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking in the mirror. I'm trying to work on 11. This ain't a time to be trying to nitpick and look for something. You know what I'm saying? So that that's very, the Passover is very important. Yes. You know, we get all fly, we get all decked out, we decorate, we go all out. You know, because we want to put our spirit into it. But at the same time, this is one of the holiest days because it's a time for self-examination. Mm -hmm. That's why it comes, what, 14 days after the new year? Because you got to be looking at the leaven within you, not nitpicking and looking for the leaven in somebody else. Mm -hmm. So I had to just go back on that brother's point because that's very important. The hell are you looking at me for? You need to be looking at yourself <laughs> this time. Maybe you could talk to me after the Passover is over, right. but this is the time to really be looking at yourself. Ah, I got something on him. Right. Look at that brother. That brother's go. garment is linen. It's supposed to be cotton. <laughs> got him. Make a 24 part series on this brother. I got some. I found something on Tara. Right. Got him. Right. You know what I'm saying? Tara said something on that comment. 25 videos on Tara. I'm going in on Tara for two and a half hours. I found some leaven in him on the Passover. Yep. He said something on that YouTube video from 2008. I see that man coming. I'm doing a 25 part series on that man. Come on, yep. man. Nitpicking, man. Yep. And, that, and I had to go on that brother's point because you that's very important. You really need to be looking at yourself this time of the year. God. You want to deal with a brother, step to a brother, that's fine. Whatever, but don't be looking to nitpick, Israel. You got to do self-examination um, at this time of the year. All right, God, brother. Right, yeah. All right. Like the brother said, what, what was Michael Jackson's most famous song? One of his most, Man in the Mirror. Man in the Mirror. Yeah. Yeah. Man in the Mirror. You got, you got to deal with that man in the mirror before you can get anything right. You know what I mean? You got to check yourself and stand in there and see what you're doing wrong. You know, then you can deal with everybody else. You know what I mean? But... You got to really get yourself right to what the brother said. Mm -hmm. Right. So like here, go to, uh, uh, you got it? Okay. You got to examine. I want to, give me First Corinthians 5. All right, let's, let's get that real quick. All right, we're not going to stay on this too long. We know it's getting late. And we can't be here all night, so we do want some time to fellowship. All right, so we're going to uh, get through this quick. But uh, we got we to gotta make these points real quick, man. First Corinthians 5 and 7. First, right, good. First Corinthians chapter five verse seven. Purge out therefore the old leaven. What did the Lord say? Purge out therefore the old leaven. When you go through this chapter, right, Paul starts off with wickedness that's going on in the church of Corinth. That's right. And he's telling the people, get this from among yourselves and get it out of yourselves. All right, read it again. Purge out therefore the old leaven. Purge out therefore the old leaven. Go ahead. That ye may be a new lump. That you may be a new lump in your house Go ahead. As ye are unleavened. Go ahead. For even a Mashiach, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. So really, at this time of the year, if you're constantly looking at other people, trying to find any little thing, guess what? The leaven you're looking for in somebody else, you haven't gotten it out of your spirit. You have not gotten rid of it yourself. You know why? Because you're trying to look. You're looking for something on somebody else. That means you have not gotten rid of your leaven. Right? Come on. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Let us keep the feast. Go ahead. Not with old leaven. Not with old leaven. That's the old man. You know a, a, a person in the street always looking for something on somebody? Right. Right, never look at themselves. And most of the time in Israel, that's how a lot of confusion happened. Because you always paying attention to somebody else. Always looking at what somebody else doing. A lot of times I don't even know about stuff in Israel because I'm too busy doing what I gotta do for the most high Yahweh shot. Stuff gotta come to me. 
Like, I'm not looking for this information. Somebody just told me this in passing because I'm too busy doing what I got to do. I don't know about what's going on. But it's like, Zabak, you ain't know that? Nah, huh? <laughs> you, know, you you telling me now? Now I know. <laughs> Teaching you the gossip of it. Yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, I didn't know that, brother. Brother, you ain't know I moved to Nah, brother, I thought you still was here. Or whatever, because I'm not all in your life like that. I do try to keep up with Israel to see if they okay or whatever, but I'm too busy trying to serve the most on myself. So you got to keep that in mind. When you're always looking for something else or any little thing, ah, got something I can use. You haven't gotten that leaven out of yourself. Go ahead. Just, just remember that, Israel. Go ahead. Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. And that's another thing. Brothers always claim they want to correct. It, uh, sisters always claim they correcting somebody. They checking somebody. But what spirit are you doing it in? Are you doing it in the spirit of malice, hatred? Oh, I got something I can use. Let me let me get, me get a counsel against this brother. God wants to. Are you are you checking a brother in the spirit of malice, hatred, envy, jealousy? What spirit are you doing it in? I'm correcting you, brother. Yeah, right, man. <laughs> You just couldn't wait to get something on a brother so you can bring him up on some kind of charge. Right. right, come on. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth, keep the feast sincerely. At this time, you really need to be looking at yourself. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. All right, that's it on that brother. We're going to move on. In um, Exodus chapter 12. This verse, uh, we, we ended 16, right? Nah. Okay, finish 16. No manner of work shall be done in them. So now, on the first and the last day, today is the last day, it say no manner of work shall be done. That's why I said it's good that we're under the grace of Yahweh Shah. Because some people have no choice. But for those of us who do have the choice and, and are able to do it, you should be doing it. If you're able to do it and you're not doing it, trust and believe Yahweh Shad is looking at that. Read on. Save that which every man must eat, that only may be done for of you. Uh-huh. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. Which we, we, that's what we're doing right now. Read on. For in the selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Right. Now you do know that... Those armies is floating around in the Dead Sea to this day, right? You understand? Those armies, those chariots is still in the Dead Sea. You understand? And the scholars is trying to find every way they can to try to disprove it and talk around it. You understand? But they can't stop the works of the Most High. Every time they think they're disproving the Bible, more evidence and more truth keep coming out. Read on. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. How long again? Forever. And he said it twice already in the same chapter. Forever. Forever. We just read how Yahweh Shah said go prepare the Passover. He was doing it. The Christians going to run to Paul. Paul was just talking about and keep this feast not with the old leaven. So that means, what, what feast was Paul talking about? The same feast that Yahweh Shah was talking about. This is an ordinance forever. Read on. Verse 18. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month at even, uh -huh. ye shall eat unleavened bread until the 1 and 20th day of the month at even. And this proves that Amalek is definitely the devil that the Bible speaks of. He's right. definitely the synagogue of Satan. That's right. Because he added an extra day to accommodate for himself. Right. It said until the from from the first from the 14th day to the 21st day, y'all do the math for y'all counter for yourself. How many days is that? That's seven days. That ain't eight days. Read on. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. Uh -huh. For whosoever eateth that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel. Uh -huh. Whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Right, so the Most High was serious about this. The Most High was very serious about this. He said if you eat that leaven, you're going to be cut off. You're going to be cut off. That's why the scripture talk about for those who willingly sin, 
there remain no more sacrifice of sacrifice for your sins. You understand? It's a difference between Jake out there in the world who don't know no better. But once you're in the truth and you know this word and you know your house shot is the word and your house shot is the lamb and you know all of this and you still do it, then guess what? You spiritually going to get cut off. Read on. Ye shall eat nothing leavened in all your habitations shall ye eat unleavened bread. Uh-huh. That's verse 20. Well, that's it, yeah. All praises to the most high. Karn. All praises to Yahweh by Shiva Mashiach Yahushua. Karn. All right. So, Priest Sarah going to take verses 21 to 30. Read that for him, Ainuwala, and we're going to um, speed it up for the sake of time. Good. All right. Verse 21. 21 through 30. Then Moses called for the elders of Israel and said unto them, Stop, stop. So Moses called for the elders. So that shows you that you always had elders, wise men. Mm -hmm. Okay, people say you don't need elders and all of that. You always have elders, okay, to make wise decisions. Because experience, okay, experience is the best teacher. Okay, so that's why you always have to have elders along with Moses, he said. Moses was dealing with his elders also because that experience that Moses was the top dealing with the spirit of the Lord right on him. And he still had elders among them. Come on. And said unto them, Draw out and take your lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. So everybody had to take their lamb according to their families, divide it according to the families. Okay, read on. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin. Come on. And strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. Mm, come on. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. So like the brother was pointing out earlier about the angels passing through. But when he passed through and he saw this, it was put on your doorstep and he knew that you was dealing with the laws of the Most High. And you was doing what the Most High and Yahweh Shah wanted you to do. So that was your protection. Okay, in a sense, because you was dealing with how he wanted you to deal. Come on. For the Most High will pass through this Salakia. For the Most High will pass through to smite the Egyptians. See that? So the Most High was going to pass through the brothers and sisters who was doing the Passover, the children of Israel, and smite the Egyptians. You see what I'm saying? So he was clearly dealing with separation with the children of Israel. Because we, we, you know, we read it through because of the sake of time, like the brother said, but when you read uh, Exodus 9, you find out, you know what I mean, that we was actually in a different land. And Mosiah told us to separate from them while he plagued them with storms and, and, and tornadoes and stuff. You see what I'm saying? Come on. And when he saved the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Most High will pass over the door. And will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. See that? So when you're keeping the laws and the statutes and the commandments of the Most High, he has that protection. The destroyer is the angels that he got out here to destroy you in the spirit of Yahweh Shah. So when you're doing this, the angels is going to pass through that destruction of death and they're going to protect you. Okay? Because when you read Psalm 78, the Mosiah says he has evil angels that he sends among the people. Right. And that's not actually evil angels. That's angels doing his bidding. You understand? And then he tells you he has angels that they camp among you. Those that fear the Lord, he has angels around you. You see what I'm saying? So you always have angels protecting you. Okay? Great. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. So this is forever, man. In the land. Rehearse the righteous act in the land where you at. So for somebody to tell you not to do the Passover, that's a wicked spirit. Right. See, they don't even know they're under the spirit of Satan. Okay, did Peter know he was under the spirit of Satan? When Yahweh Shai told him, get thee behind me. Did he realize that? So sometimes people don't even know what they're doing is satanic. By trying to disconnect you from keeping the Passover and keeping your high holy day. They might not even know that. Okay, read. And it shall come to pass when ye become to the land which the Most High will give you, according as he hath promised, that 
He shall keep the service. So you got to keep the service.